Greetings again everybody, welcome back to Dark Souls. We briefly return to Filing Shrine, for now, to say hello to Big Head Logan. But first, let's see what Griggs has to say about that. Oh, hello again. I was waiting to tell you. Master Logan has returned, and he tells me that he has you to thank. Well, we are both in your debt now. Thank you, sincerely. He's just over there. Go along and have a chat. Oh, hello. I appreciate the attention, but you really should speak to Master Logan. That will certainly do you more good. Have you spoken to Master Logan? He is an accomplished scholar. The arts of sorcery would never have come this far without his contributions. And he has the nerve to go risking life and limb. What a stubborn old fellow. <laughs> so he really seems to want to us to go to Logan instead of him to learn spells? So, well, let's just go on ahead, why not? If Logan is the better trainer, let's learn magic from him instead of from Grix. Hello there. I was expecting you. As promised, I will share my sorceries. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that you are unable to learn sorcery. The basic framework, you see, it cannot be taught. Oh, do not fret. Life isn't all about sorcery. You will find your own way. Don't frown with regret. Peer forward with your head. We need 15 intelligence for him to teach us spells. Luckily, just one point in intelligence will fix this for us. Hello there. Glad to see you alive. Oh. It seems you've come quite a way. Excellent. You're certainly ready. I shall teach you sorceries. Logan has a rather nice way of letting us know that we're too dumb to learn his spells. He just tells us that we should be happy that we can hit things with a stick. Still, um, he teaches us some new spells now. Only homing soul mass and soul spear are really new and hopefully I'll be able to show them at some point. No results, eh? Well, the way of sorceries is a long, hard road. Take it slow. He seems rather nice. But anyway, back to Blight Town once more. There is one more thing we can do at this point, because we have a pyromancy flame of at least plus 10 now. Obviously, I didn't show upgrading it, but that's unnecessary. So, our new NPC should be right around that corner. Hmm. Nice ropes. She's got some good taste. Hmm. A mere undead. Yet you can see me. Fascinating. I am Quelana of Isolith. I am not often revealed to walkers of flesh. You have a gift. Are you too one who seeks my pyromancy? Like Salomon? Yes, of course. It should be expected. Very well. You shall be my pupil. But to pursue my pyromancy, you must give something up. Are you prepared to do this? Long ago, I accepted another pupil like yourself. Over 200 years ago, there was a man almost as bungling as you. In your world, he was called Salaman, the master pyromancer. The little rascal really made something of himself. Pyromancy is the art of invoking and manipulating fire. But remember one thing. Always fear the flame lest you be devoured by it and lose yourself. I would hate to see that happen again. When she says that she would hate to see that happen again, she either means Salaman in some way, or maybe Quelag and the Fair Lady, because Quelana here is another sister of those two. She is, I think, the only daughter of Chaos that still kind of has a human shape. And she's actually the best pyromancy trainer in the game. She sells us, for instance, here Firestorm, which is a pretty good spell. I don't like it much, but I'll show it at some point. Most interesting to us here are Great Fireball, an upgrade of Fire Orb, and Great Combustion, which is an upgrade of, well, Combustion, obviously. If we had a plus 15 Pyromancy Flame, we could ascend it, but more on that later. Now go. Whatever you do, do not crack and go hollow. Lest my time spent on you be wasted. So it's been a while since we used a really distinct build that you don't just see every day. 
So you will be happy to know that this time around, at least for the first part of Analondo, I will be rocking some pyromancy and also use a crossbow, but no melee weapon. This should prove to be interesting. We're also wearing the appropriate attire for using pyromancy, the gold hemmed set, which is the same robes that Quailana was wearing and in fact all Daughters of Chaos, so it's safe to say that it's probably traditional pyromancer's garb. Alright then, let's just go on ahead and check out some of the new pyromancies we got. First, the fire whip. Seems like it does some decent damage, it can hit twice, but sometimes, as you can see right here, it also manages to whiff completely even though it seems as though it should have hit. Now, we also got great combustion, which works exactly like regular combustion, but does more damage. It also has less castings, uh, but the damage upgrade makes up for that. Now, pay attention to the statue over there. Might become relevant at some point. But for now, let's fight more of those guys. They can be a pain to fight. The trick is to circle them clockwise, because then you will be at the side of them that doesn't have the shield, and you'll be more likely to get a hit in. You can also wait for them to take away their shield, but that can take a while. You know, this is what we came for basically, and it's some Demon Titan Knight. Now let's go to the other side real quick. Check out the statue in the back again, might become relevant at some point. Now the crossbow, it actually does a surprisingly decent amount of damage. I would have thought it would be more negligible, but it actually works out. And we didn't really get a chance to check out the fireballs on the other side. I mean, I used them, but I missed completely, and so did they here. I actually hit the shield. But yeah, kind of a funny story, when I first got here, uh, I decided to switch to the Zweihander at this point, because all my other weapons didn't really do very good damage. And I was really surprised at the time that heavy weapons in this game are actually useful. It just felt good standing underneath them and, you know, bisecting them with a heavy attack from the Zweihander. But right now, we're not actually using a sword, just crossbows. And this guy, I think, I'm going to take out with just a crossbow. It works surprisingly well. I guess being able to stay away a little more actually does the trick. Watch out for the shield bash. It has an AoE effect and if you are too close, you will get hit. And it actually reaches farther than you would think. And if you look closely at that chest, you will see it's moving. Yes, it's a mimic and you can identify it either by the chain, by throwing Lloyd's talisman at it, by attacking it, or looking at it really closely. These fireballs here actually do a good amount of damage, and I like them and I'm going to continue using them in the future. Like all crystal weapons, this crystal halberd here has much higher attack power than regular weapons, but it also cannot be repaired. So after those little side paths, let's just, well, proceed into Analondo, City of the Gods, former home of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. I really love this area. It has interesting lore and interesting challenges too, although one of my most hated spots in the game as well. Um, there's a lot of little interesting details in it like those statues I pointed out earlier. If I were to point out everything, it would take a while, so I will just post a few pictures in the thread. And hey, here is a new friend, or rather an old friend I should say. We fought that guy as a boss earlier, although he was more of a challenge back then. This one didn't really pose much of a threat. With our new learned powers, we can pretty easily dispatch him. But he can still be a fairly difficult opponent and he has one or two new tricks up his sleeve as we might see in the future. That guy doesn't respawn though, so we're safe for now, at least from him. Now, we drop down here. There's of course also a way to walk down here, down those stairs, but we're not going to go back up there because, well, we have to go up here actually to progress. It doesn't really seem intuitive, I guess, uh, but if you look around for long enough, you will eventually find it. If you're lucky enough, you might even find a player message pointing it out to you, but I actually had to look a while. 
We're now in the cathedral and greeted with a surprise attack. I of course knew was coming, so I could just set the guy on fire before he could actually, well, you know, surprise me. And the crossbow is still really good. Those guys usually try to dodge around a lot if you get up close. And they can be quite a pain to fight, as we will probably see at some point in the future. But for now, I'm just really glad that I can actually take him out with a crossbow. But for this little point here, I always bring a bow. Because to lure those guys out, which is recommended, you actually need a bow to aim accurately. Because you can't really uh, no-scope those guys with a crossbow. And again... The crossbow proves its usefulness, especially here. Fighting up here can become quite a pain, because you're not allowed to dodge. Or at least, if you do dodge, there's a very high probability that you will fall off. A lot of people die here because they panic, but if an enemy gets close to you, don't move around, don't try to dodge, just stay there, block his attacks, and then attack yourself. And this chain here, which holds the chandelier, can be broken. Sadly, not by crossbows. And neither by shields, so let's actually get out a, a weapon to do the job. Now we can't reach the item that was hanging off the chandelier yet, but at some point we will actually go down there and pick it up. Now this guy, check this out, always works, a headshot will knock him straight off. A lot of people find it difficult to navigate those really narrow platforms, since this is not a platformer, but as long as you adjust your camera, you can actually get across rather easily. And you see me running here, but I wouldn't do this. I just do this for the sake of the let's play here to get across a little bit faster to make it a uh, less boring to watch but if you just walk across slowly you will be safe and you won't have much trouble patience is rewarded after all especially in this game and on here is an enemy and for the longest time I didn't even know why he was there because down there is nothing which is why I'm not even walking down there instead I'm gonna show you how to actually get to the other side here Pretty simple, just drop down here and then drop down at the other side again and you're there. I always tend to forget this, I just ignore this part usually, because the reward you get for it isn't a very good one. I'm using the Black Knight Sword by the way, and we will be seeing more of that in the second part of Anna Londo. But for now, let's just go on ahead and get our Divine Blessing and go back using the same trick we used to actually get there, only in the other direction. And this is that one enemy again. Now we're back here. Now we know what's down there. So then, for now, with a knife in my chest, let's go on through the fog gate. We can't make use of that lever here just yet. Maybe you will be able to guess what it does after we've done the next thing we're just about to do. So now we've lowered this platform and have created a shortcut back to our bonfire from earlier. And another gargoyle is right here. I took the last one out really quickly, so let's see how this goes. Pyromancy actually works well against those, it does a ton of damage. And at this point, if you have a high pyromancy flame, it's probably your best bet. And yes, using the crossbow close-up isn't a very good idea, it doesn't even hit. Those guys can actually breathe lightning by the way. You might remember that the bell tower gargoyles could actually breathe fire. These can breathe lightning. 
and I'm really sad I couldn't show it off, I just really didn't want to drag out the fight for much longer. We did get his halberd and his helm though. I did call Analondo the city of the gods a little earlier, but it's also the city of giants. If you look at these stairs, you will notice that there are two different sized sets of stairs. One's for the giants, the other is for more human sized people. And they don't really want to bother with those. They're a pain to fight, they take way too long. So I tend to just run past them. Here is a safe spot if you really want to be safe from them. They will just retreat. But you can just walk on and you will also be safe from them. You'll just have to deal with some enemies as well. But this I think is another spot where the crossbow will really shine. Because those guys get staggered easily. And they also get knocked back a lot. Oh yeah. That last guy, if you shoot an arrow in his head, he will actually get knocked down as well. But I decided to go up close, just to show what he can do. Not too tough of an opponent, as I said, pretty much every attack, even light attacks, do stagger him. Unless maybe you use a really light weapon, like say, a dagger. Oh, oh and now... Imminent despair, we're actually coming up to the spot that I consider to be the most bullshit spot in the game. Those two guys have nothing to do with it, by the way. And oh look, an invader, just in time for that one part of Analondo. Hell, I should say that one part of the game. If you just aggro those two guys and then walk back up here, you'll actually have a really easy time defeating them. But now that one part, we will have to deal with two silver knights shooting spears from giant bows at us. And those spears, if they hit us, they actually knock us down, or at the very least, knock us back. Blocking them will have the same effect, even if you have a high stability shield. So you will have to move fast, not get hit. And don't be afraid to roll, but always roll a little bit against the wall. And always take out the right guy first. Because, uh... If you take out the left guy first, the right guy will actually shoot at you. And down there is our invader friend. Let's not get distracted though. We will have to take out that guy as well. Oh, and both of those respawn by the way. They're regular enemies. Have fun with that. When I came here first, I thought they were black knights. But if you look at them, you will actually notice that they are silver knights. Much less black on the armor. Now to deal with the invader. This is a really tough spot to be invaded in. The invader was probably hoping though that those two knights would kill us. Guess what, they didn't. So let's check him out, he's still waiting down there and wait. Does he have the same kind of bow those guys had? Oh, looks like certainly. Let's just run. If I didn't know what was behind that Fage down there, I probably wouldn't even dare to go through because there might be enemies. Luckily, I've played through this game a couple of times. And through there is a bonfire. But since we still have an invader on our tail, we can't actually use it. So we'll have to actually fight him or die trying. Oh, the crossbow doesn't seem to do any damage. He seems to have fairly high physical resist, but pyromancy actually works. Backstabbing also works, although not in my favor here. But this is actually a good fight. Although that was kind of unexpected. But still, no grudges held. The net code of the game isn't exactly good, and it's really laggy, so stuff like this can happen. But let's just get back to the bonfire. Luckily, 
I managed to make it back to the bonfire in one piece on my first try. I was kind of afraid that it might take me a while, because that spot, it can actually mess one up. But now we already saw Solaire earlier. Let's go on ahead and have a chat with him. Oh, there you are. You've been quiet these days. Smooth summoning out there. Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You've left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. You really are fond of chatting with me, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings for me. Oh no, dear me, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> we really haven't talked to him in a while. You really are I'm really glad he's safe. This is the second spot he can appear in, by the way. Um, but only if you talk to him the first time. But now we actually explored the first part of Anilando. Next time, we're going to explore the rest of it and fight my favorite boss. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you again next time.